Hey, Mike Rain here with uh, Canadian Musician, and on the line with me is Peter Drymanis from Toronto Band July Talk. Uh, a lot of you probably know the hit single Paper Girl from July Talk's uh, self-titled debut album, and it's uh, that song, really, that I first heard uh, was my first introduction to July Talk, and uh, I didn't tell you this before, Peter, but when I heard that song, I heard it on the radio uh, a few times, and the DJ would never say who the band's name was, and I kept being like, this is this is a brilliant song, I need to find out who this is. So anyways, when I found that out, I knew I had to get you, so uh, thanks a lot for joining me today. Oh, no worries, thanks a lot for having me. To, to start off, first of all, the um, the main people, I guess, who say in the band are obviously yourself, as well as Leia Faye, the uh, other co-vocalist in July Talk. Um, but And it seems to be you two that are in all the promo photos and that, but uh, is July Talk officially a five-piece now, or is it technically you and you and Leia? It always has been a five-piece, yeah. I mean, the, 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 there was a while when we kind of were doing press shots as... As the two of us, and the nature of sort of those press shot kind of things is that they end up getting used for a lot longer than you expect them to at all times. So if you, you always know, got to stick with what you what you want to see in the future. But yeah, no, it's a five piece band. We write as a five piece band. Um, the the same three guys have been in it for a long time, and uh, and Leah and I obviously the priority of our music is to kind of establish and uh, and adhere to sort of a, a, a conversation, right? And like all the songs are meant to be, you know, presenting two sides to a story or to an argument or whatever it is. Um, and so that's kind of the closest it ever comes to actually being the two of us is that, that, that all five of us see that as our priority. Um yeah, no, it's a very much always has been a, a five-piece band. Mm -hmm. The story of your formation, it's uh, there's this almost romanticized story about how you guys met, and uh, I won't make you recount it for the millionth time. And uh, for listeners who want to... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for not making me recount it again. <laughs> that means a lot to me. <laughs> and for uh, listeners who don't know what we're talking about, it's easily uh, searchable online. But uh, the one thing I do want to know, though, about that meeting is, what, what was it about Leia's voice, though? Well, maybe here's her personality, but what was it in her that attracted you as far as knowing you you wanted to work with her make music with her i don't know i guess i i think probably in her voice it was that she didn't over sing like mm -hmm. she did she didn't sing like she was trying to convince you she was a good singer mm -hmm. and i think that that's really what i still love about her voice is that i think a lot of uh singers try to like you know audition for some reality show you know like it's like a Obviously, my voice has a lot of character in it, a lot of character that I work on and, and try to play with, and and it's like an instrument to me, you know. Like, but uh, but I think the best singing often comes out of an honest moment, and like just singing the way that you do it. And she's so good at that. And uh, I don't even know if you can be good at that per se. Like, you just kind of are it or you're not. And I see a lot of singers going around. Uh, pushing themselves to try to like Janis Joplin it up or whatever you want to call it and, and I love Janis Joplin don't get me wrong but you know like it's just she just knows simplicity and she knows that, that the best things come out when you're honest and I think that you can really hear that when you hear her sing and she can be really really specific in the studio about what she wants because she doesn't want it to come across uh, mm -hmm. you know forced or anything mm -hmm. and when uh well, like you said, kind of off the bat, that the songs, the focus of the songs often is that is you two and your voices, and that the songs are really almost a conversation between the two of you. Uh, so, when you're writing lyrics, are you thinking? Are you thinking of the song as a conversation? Are you thinking who will be singing each line? Oh, absolutely. You know, like there's a completely turns yourself kind of backwards to change the way you write. But this, this this project has forced all of us to really think in that in a different way you know it's not about verse verse chorus chorus whatever mm -hmm. it is in a sense but it's really about providing the opportunity to have a certain kind of symmetrical nature to each song there needs to be an opportunity for both people to 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 say their piece and Leia works on her lyrics a long time and I work on my lyrics a long time we I also am very against any songs that don't have a cohesiveness mm -hmm. um, throughout 
thematically, you know, like if a song ever is trying to say something, I don't know if all songs are or not, but the, but if, if they're trying to get at something or some emotion or something, I always hate it when there's elements of the song that don't have anything to do with that. Um, the feeling is, I think, is, is that you really, we get together, we have sort of an idea for a song or we know where a song is going. And then we kind of sh- try to decide to how how that exercise. It's a lot easier sometimes because the songs are actually about us, you know, and about what we're going through as a band or as as uh, as whatever is happening with us. So that that comes quite easily. But when you do try to write a song about a memory or about something that happened long ago or something like that, it just comes from conversations between Leia and I and trying to trying to really come up with um, how would you say you know we try to keep it as organic as possible talk as little as possible what we're doing and what we are and what we're trying to get at you know so if these conversations can stay as subtle as possible it can really be helpful interesting and uh, it's when you're writing because you have that that conversation going on those dual voices is there a pressure when you're writing songs to make sure that you're always including this dual voice dynamic do you ever feel like you know this is a song that's better off just for me or maybe just for Leia not at this point I mean there was some thought about that on the first record when we were first developing the band of like possibly having a couple songs on the record that was just like one singer Mm -hmm. um but at this point, I would imagine that would kind of go to something we would do on the side or, like, something we would just kind of... Like, the, the, I don't find it interesting. I don't really want to front a band by myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't see that as necessary. Maybe if, like, it became more of, like, a kind of a concept album kind of thing, but mm-hmm. but that'd be more in the future. I think that, that I, uh, I rely pretty heavily on the dynamics in our band. Mm-hmm. And the only reason I'm allowed to go as manic as I, I do and as, as kind of I push myself as far as I can is because I know that someone's kind of pulling me back. Hmm. You know, it's like when you're starting a fight with somebody and you don't actually want to fight the guy, so you're lucky that your friend is there to hold you back, you know? like, yeah. And that's kind of how I see our band. Like, no matter which way you want to go you want to go there with so much intention and so much uh integrity and pushing yourself so hard Mm -hmm. and throw yourself at something but because of the symmetry you're able to kind of understand it it doesn't get cheesy it doesn't get sort of overblown because i can go with such emotion and then she can kind of make fun of me for it and we can have that self-awareness to our songs interesting and i believe you guys recorded the album after you'd only really played a handful of shows together. Is, is that correct? Well, yeah, like our manager started with us really early on, and he's made like some of our favorite records in the past. He's a producer as well. Mm-hmm. That's like his main job. Uh, we're trying to steal him away from that job, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, but no, he, he came into the fold so early, so he owns a studio. And so we just started a record. You know, and uh, didn't really know what the band was. I mean, didn't really know what we were doing. And uh, we all played in other bands with each other for a long time, except obviously Leia hadn't been in it. And so I think that it was it was a good exercise, you know. And I think as a uh, staying true to that that ultimate kind of goal of always being honest, mm-hmm. I'm really proud of the fact that this album is being used as a way for us to introduce ourselves to to a fan base or to whatever you want to call them just people human beings you know like giving this album to somebody and being like meet us hello how are you this is what this is our meeting this is our handshake Mm -hmm. you know and and it's so honest to do that because we were kind of meeting ourselves when writing and recording it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, who we are now and what we're writing now may, might be a lot more cohesive, might be a little less scattered, these sort of things. But I like the album because of that. Yes. And I like the album that we were like learning. We were being born. We were like in the midst of birth <laughs> and, and putting this out. And then now when people listen to it, they can hear that sort of tension finding itself and, and that sort of settling and and uh and that's why i've been so uh animate with a label and with the rest of the band and everybody feels the same way i think that like we really continue to tour this album um we're, we're gonna add some new song we're gonna be putting out 
I'll tell you about that in a second. The, uh, the, it's important for us to tour this album and go to like other countries and like introduce ourselves with this album because I don't really want to do the next record and then like have to go to other places and like reintroduce ourselves. You know what I mean? Like I'd rather like go to say hello and then be able to come back. So our, just what we decided to do, uh, you heard it here first was the, the October we're gonna re-release the album yeah. and we've added four new songs um, and so so the idea is, is that, that we felt like we were kind of in a limbo right like I felt like I feel like in Canada we've we've had a chance to kind of go around and introduce ourselves we haven't so much in the States we've only been one tour we haven't gone to Europe yet we're going early next year so it sort of felt like we were lucky enough that, that our first kind of like a run of records sort of sold out and whatever and now we're we were in a limbo we were like I really want to release this new stuff mm -hmm. I know that I don't want to release a new record because I know that that I don't want to have to reintroduce ourselves yeah. you know to all these people so so it came at the perfect timing and kind of a it, it felt really like the right idea to kind of re-release it put on four new songs and then uh, and then work towards the next record next year interesting and actually that makes more sense and Alex uh, your manager had had told me that you guys would be relaunching the album in October but it's, I, I didn't know it would be including four new songs and so with that with those who know the album as it currently exists Will there be a noticeable difference then between the new songs and the songs that have been there from the start? Um, I think, I, I mean, I think there will, mm -hmm. um, to an extent. We recorded them in the same team, right? Like, so it was kind of, uh, kind of an interesting, exciting experience to go back into the studio and back in time as a fully formed band uh, and a fully realized project. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, they're definitely July Talk songs. Like, you can hear them, you can hear us in it, you know. I mean, I think that for anyone that's seen us live, and I would say that we're more of a live band than a recorded band in general. Like, our shows, we, we feel very strongly about. So, I think they definitely mimic the show probably a bit more than necessarily our record did because we didn't really know what we were doing when we first recorded it. But they're still the same style. They're still fun. They're still dancey. And they're still um, angry and dramatic. So, I mean, those are all things. I mean, I, I, the other thing I always come back to is that what's really fun about our band is that we can change the style. We can change what we do. You know, these sort of things can change quite severely to us. Yeah. And there's still such a cohesive structure just because Leia and I are singing and our voices are so, like, so much the focus, you know? Like, yeah. so, you know, it, it wouldn't be so easy, I don't think, for other bands, but we feel very lucky of the fact that that can be kind of the, the, the central focus and, mm -hmm. and we can kind of move freely and evolve freely. At least we hope so and we hope that people will, will stick with us. Yes. And when, with your music, there is some emphasis kind of put on the lyrics, particularly because of this idea that we keep coming back to about it being a conversation between yourself and Leia, a conversation between two vocalists. And, but with that, uh, I know some people occasionally would have a hard time writing writing songs, particularly writing lyrics that someone else is going to sing. But the vocal delivery can really imply a different meaning to a song than it may look on the page. Does, does Leia, do you find that ever at all? Does Leia's delivery of the song change? The well, I mean, Leia writes her own lyrics now. Oh, okay, does she? Uh, she, on the first record, I, I wrote most of the lyrics, I think. Mm -hmm. I think I wrote all the lyrics. But, uh, but I guess the yeah. I mean, when we started, it was tough because we really like a lot of the songs I'd already written, and like we were writing in a really kind of like new way. We were learning about each other, and we were like kind of taking it step by step. And we didn't want to move too fast, and we didn't want things to crash and burn. I think early in any band's life, it's kind of just survivalist. You do whatever works, and you just try to keep everyone happy until there's sort of enough invested in it from everybody's standpoint that no one's going to quit. <laughs> you know, that's really you're just dodging the end. Um, and then as soon as things kind of become fully realized, then, then those things can be kind of messed with and, and you can create more of an honest experience. And so now we're just trying to honestly represent those conversations. So when, when I wrote the lyrics and she was, she was singing the lyrics that I wrote, I think it was like probably the most terrifying artistic collaboration I'd ever been a part of because she was so, 
so specific about needing to know what every lyric meant, needing to know that they all the songs made sense and all the songs were um they were cohesive, going back to what I was saying earlier. Yes. You know, that, that, that I wasn't cheating something to make it sound good. Yes. You know, because everyone can write a good sounding song. I mean, it's like, you know, what the fuck is Black Betty about? <laughs> um, or these sort of things. I don't know if I can swear in here, sorry. But yeah, no, I mean, but I think it was really important that accountability that came with working with that. And now now it goes both ways, you know, and I, I hold Leia fully accountable to the lyrics that she sings. And she does so with me. And so you're really becoming, we're becoming as close as we possibly can to a true conversation and it, it's only getting easier to do as we work together more and more well if she's writing her own lyrics and you still have that dual voice within the song that must imply that i guess you're writing together so then how how is that the case are you guys sitting down next to each other or are you bring each other pre-written lyrics and kind of matching them together um i think that it kind of varies i mean like Sitting down and writing a song, Leia, Leia and I are probably the closest, like, Leia's probably the closest I am to anybody. You know, we spend about eight months a year on the road, and, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I feel very artistically comfortable around her. That said, sitting down with anybody and working on lyrics is an extremely vulnerable and terrifying experience, yes. and that really isn't changing, and I, don't, I hope it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Um, so right now it kind of varies we sit down and work on things for sure but then there's also times where you know I'll bring a song to the band or Josh will bring a song to the band Josh and I normally come up with the first kind of like riffs and then we go to the band and we all arrange it and write, on, write it and stuff and so sometimes I'll just re-sing the same verse that I have like I have an idea about what the song's going to be like yeah. I'll just re-sing it over hers and kind of show her the melody and we'll talk about it that way and then yeah. and then afterwards she kind of has time to go sit with it and think about the song and think about what her reactions to it are and, yeah. and like I said everything's pretty like involved in itself right now pretty like kind of like not meta I'm not trying to get all but like there is like a an element of being involved in itself most yeah. of our songs are about each other or about what we're going through and what we have because we're we have a very sort of um, unique uh, way of dealing with each other, and so that that, that really helps. Mm -hmm. Well, with this album, uh, because of the success of Paper Girl, you've garnered an audience that's a lot quicker than a lot of people may do, especially when they're really coming together as a band like you guys did. Uh, would you have preferred maybe to have had that time to write and perform and get to know each other as a band before knowing that there'd be so many people listening? Or are you glad that this is all happening in front of an audience? And beggars can't be choosers. I don't think that there's any... We feel extremely lucky for what happened to us. There's so many variables of how it happened and how lucky we are to have the audience we have so soon. Um, I remember sitting in a park next to my house like a couple of years ago with a guy that runs a label in Canada, and he's just a really great, great guy and a great friend of mine. And he, I remember him saying, you don't want to be a flash in the pan. You don't want to get popular quick um, because you know those things don't last and they, you wanted to let develop a career and these sort of things and, they, yeah. and I've always remembered that and uh, and the only downside which isn't actually a downside but, but the downside of actually coming and, and rising really quickly and, and trying to keep up with that is that you have to keep up with it yeah. and you have to um, show that you're not a buzz band and that you can or you, you you can stand up to it you know that like when a big show rolls around and and um uh, people you're expecting to you know put way more people in the building than, than you think you can yes. you need to show up and you need to do more than just play your guitar and sing you know mm -hmm. you don't no one wants to watch you just play your record you gotta really stand up to those things so there's a kind of an expectancy that you have to kind of be, be ready with mm -hmm. so so that comes very quickly that said like you know we're literally like five best friends making music and enjoying the hell out of it and we love it so much and we love each other so much that uh that the fact that people like what we're doing and want to watch us play and these sort of things it's like 
it's just a dream, man. Hmm. It, you know, it's it's a it's an absolute dream that people want to be involved in it. And uh, and all I can say is that we would be doing it for years to come if no one was at our shows. You know, we we just love it and we love each other and we would do it. And I I don't know what my life would be without it. Sounds excellent. And uh, to to close this up, uh, oh, a lot's been uh, made or implied when it comes to your influences as a songwriter so uh i guess with that in mind i'm going to ask a bit of a hypothetical question here is uh if there's one songwriter whose mind you could pick who, who would it be and what, or what what question would you ask that you could get a straight answer for oh man that's such a good question well, i guess i'm really interested in chord structure more than lyrics in terms of talking to someone about it because i think like I was talking about earlier, like you can't really pick someone's mind about lyrics. Yes. I can't really imagine that being useful or helpful or exciting to talk about. That's true. So going about more about chord structure, I think that like, I don't know, man, like Jeff Tweedy, I guess, would be a huge thing. Or like Britt Daniel and Dan Buckner and just like, just all the guys in Queens over the years, you know? Yeah. But, but I guess, yeah, no, it's just more, what's really exciting to me is how, people can get, you know, like a bridge to come in after their after their crazy chorus mm-hmm. and suck everything out and just lead everything back towards this anthem at the end or or, you know, how pre choruses can build so so beautifully and like these sort of ideas that I think it's really exciting and and listening to, you know, structures of bands like Wilco and that over the years. It's like it's just really open minded and, and they're really smart about it, the way they construct songs. That's a good answer. And uh as the listeners can find your guys' beautiful uh cover of Wilco's Venus Stop the Train online. So Yeah, there you go, yeah. Leigh <laughs> and I did that kinda of drunk one night. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant, I love it. And oh, so anyways, man, uh it's been a true uh, true pleasure talking to you. Uh, we're gonna go out here with a song from uh from the July Talk album. Uh, is there a particular song that's well, let's not do Paper Girl. Everyone's heard Paper Girl at this point. Is there another song on the album that uh, you want people to hear? Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, let's play. Which one should we play? Let's actually, let's do Don't Call Home. That one doesn't get love. I, I, I mean, and that one, uh, Josh and I, it was probably the most collaborative chord structure writing I've ever been involved in. We got together and everything just kind of clicked. And so that song is also to write a place called Attawa, Piscat. It's a First Nation reserve yes. here at James Bay. That's uh, I had the privilege of going to, and they've gone through some real tough times. Beautiful. So we'll go out here with uh, July Talks of Don't Go Home. And Peter, it's uh, like I said, it's a pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for the call.